The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. And welcome to Down the Garden Path with your host, Joanne Shaw, right here on Reality Radio 101. To contact Joanne live this evening right now, send her an email in studio101 at gmail.com. And now, right to your host of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw. Thank you, Gary, and welcome everyone to Down the Garden Path, where every week we discuss a variety of landscaping topics, down-to-earth tips, and advice for your plants, gardens, and landscapes. As a landscape designer, I think it is important and possible to have a great garden that is low-maintenance. And I personally love researching topics and in, and inviting on new guests that can help us with our low-maintenance gardens and landscaping. This week on Down the Garden Path, I'm happy to have Chris Ray, owner of Humber Valley Landscaping, a design-build landscaping company. Now, Chris, from an early age, he said he always knew he wanted to work in the landscape business. As a teenager, he would mow lawns throughout high school. And in university, he worked for a landscaping company, which solidified his decision. Then, for whatever reason, right, Chris, he was ended up in telecom for 10 years. But his heart was always in landscaping. So in 2001, he started his own landscaping business, Humber Valley Landscaping. They are located in Markham and serve the GTA, Toronto, including Toronto, York, and Durham. They specialize in hardscaping, such as flagstone, interlock, and retaining walls. And they also take a lot of pride in their garden installs. They work closely with our, their clients to design and install quality projects. Chris prides himself on having the knowledge and expertise to offer clients high-end quality products with outstanding customer service. And on the personal side, Chris has a 16-year-old daughter, I can't believe she's 16 already, who plays soccer, and in his spare time, he's, of course, her coach. Thank you for joining us today, Chris, and welcome to the show. Thanks, Joanne. Happy to be here. Good. I can't believe Alex is 16. Yeah, it's uh, time has flown. I know. Just before we got on on the call, I was we were talking about universities tonight. So it's yes, time is flying. Yes, for sure. I, I see people with young children, and I'm always like that when they look exhausted. I'm like, yeah, the the days are long, but the years are short. So, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So ignore. Yeah, enjoy it. So. Um, well, lo- I'm so happy to have a landscaper on. There's lots always to talk about. It's such a great topic. Um, but I wanted to uh, explain to our listeners. Humber Valley Landscaping is a landscape design build company. And you don't right. hear people sometimes. I don't know if they know what that means. So I just wondered if you wanted to explain that to our listeners. Well, I think the, the main goal we have is to design projects that work for people and mm-hmm. design um, landscapes that are going to benefit your lifestyle. So a lot of the time when we look at a project, uh, we get calls often for services that may or may not work for a client. And I think one of the differences is that I I make sure that we're providing value add to the client Mm -hmm. or at least the the project we're doing provides value to the client. And quite often people will call and they'll want to have a a hedge removed or a Mm -hmm. fence removed and a new fence or hedge but it may not be the situation that requires that it's time for a you know a new way of thinking a new way of looking at the project um maybe put in a retaining wall build something different which requires us to do some designing and um work with 
of a few designers over the years that have done some beautiful things, including yourself. Thanks. And I just find that when you you take that element of working with designs and having that service, you just you're just farther ahead than the competition, and you're not just out doing cookie cutter patios or walkways or whatever. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I think, and you bring a different approach to it as opposed to, um, I think sometimes customers want A and, and they think landscapers are just going to come and do A. But mm-hmm. if A is not the right thing, then they need someone who's the professional. We're the professionals. We need to tell them that, right? We need to explain to them why they need a retaining wall and why that retaining wall needs to be built this way, right? Exactly. So quite often I'll, and I'm, I'm, guilty to anybody for this i'll talk to a client and they'll say they want this this and this and i say great we'll start pricing it. and i think about it for a moment and i think you know what you need to bring someone in to look at this because like you know that philosophy and that sort of strategy doesn't really work in today's climate and it mm-hmm. doesn't work with today's customer either right um people want to have third party or designers coming in and and working with them um identifying colors they like flowers they like Mm -hmm. you know what their likes and dislikes are um what their aversions to things are whatever Mm -hmm. so you can create a beautiful place for people to hang out and it's it's their it's their their space it's not my space it's not my my creation it's it's a it's a collaboration between the contractor the designer and the client Mm. and it's um you know it's it's a i think it's just important that more more clients need to understand that and, and there's a thousand analogies, right? Right. Like, you know, build a, you wouldn't build a house without plans. You wouldn't mm-hmm. start, you know, build a car without plans. Like, you wouldn't do anything without yes, plans. Yes, yeah. I always do the kitchen one. I say you wouldn't wake up on the Saturday morning and take the sledgehammer to your kitchen cupboards, right, With a, without a plan. But for some reason, they, they have no problem waking up on the weekend and getting out their shovel yeah, <laughs> and digging and up their landscaping, right? That's true. And it's, it's um, so we've gone to a, to a, a model now for my pricing and and we don't do work without a plan excellent so it has to it has to be included in the project in the, it has to be included in the uh the scope of work that needs to get done before we can even start there's just been too many instances over the years where um you know you have a customer that has a a vision i have a vision mm-hmm and nothing's written down. Right. They want this. You do this, and it comes out, and it's not what they want. Yeah. And there's nothing to refer. There's nothing to refer back to. There's right. no blueprint of of anything. Right. And if there is, it's something that we've created and probably haven't been paid for. Mm-hmm. Therefore, um, you know, it's 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 not really benefiting the client. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the client needs to have a proper design done by a professional someone that you know understands the the area understands the the climate understands the um local plants the local rocks trees yes, interlock, yep. whatever mm-hmm. yeah and the size of things i think t- sometimes how often have you built a patio because they said they wanted a 10 by 10 patio and then you leave at the end of the day and and then they put their patio table on it and go well that's not big enough <laughs> Yeah, it happens. Uh, like I, I uh, we're we're doing a patio right now, and 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 it was laid out, and then I said no one has ever said the patio is too big. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> again, you need to plan this stuff, and and working with a really good designer, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to be looking at furniture sizes. You're going to mm-hmm. be looking at where the sun's setting on your property. Yeah. You're going to be looking at a lot, a lot of a lot of things that you probably didn't think of when you set out this to start this project. Right. And I was actually thinking on the way back from the job fit today what um, what people in other industries spend on design. Mm. Um, if it's in construction, it can be up as high as ten percent of the project, yeah, and mm. or higher. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a reasonable, you know, between five and eight percent of the entire project should be spent to the design and the designer. Wow, that's a lot, but that's good. <laughs> not really. <laughs> well, I guess. Ten thousand dollar project. Yeah. Ten percent is a thousand bucks. Yeah. Not, no, I guess I guess you're right. That's true. Not a crazy amount. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a sliding scale because if it's a larger project, of course, you're going to yes. probably have more involvement. Hmm. Um. But I think that yeah, it, it it needs to be it needs to be embraced. Right. Right. And so you really see the benefit for uh, clients. You think that that 
the benefit of having a design for the client. I love that term co- collaboration. Yeah. Well, yeah, just because just, I have, like, you know, I've been doing this long enough, and I can look at a house, and I get an idea of what I'd like to do mm-hmm. if it was my house or yeah. if it was my, whatever, my project and what I would like to see. Yeah. So I have a, an idea, and then if you come to the project, you're going to look at it and say, okay, this is my idea, and the yeah. client's going to have their idea. Right. And I, I find that what helps me is that I've listened to the designer and the homeowner and come up with a collaboration Mm -hmm. instead of a designer coming and saying no it has to be this way it has to be that way um, that can get the client a little bit uptight they can frustrate a contractor Mm -hmm. Um, there has to be a bit of leniency absolutely we understand it's you know your design Mm -hmm. but it's also you're working with other people that want to make it work too yes so um, I think it's a you know, you got to pick the right designer. You got to pick the right. Um, you got to pick your right clients too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I think if if the client is looking for like a uh, yes man, you know, someone who's just going to say okay to everything they say, and and what they're saying isn't necessarily right. Um, I can think of pools, for instance. You know, people want to yeah. maximize. I get it that they want to maximize their space in their yard because the yards are smaller and they want a pool, so they want to put that pool as close to the fence as possible, and you know. But yet they also know that they want to garden around that fence. And so uh, this happens every year where there's an 18-inch garden between the fence and the, the three-foot you know, three perimeter around the pool. Yep. And then the pool company leaves, and then they call me, and they say, well, we need some large trees for privacy. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, large trees for privacy do not have an 18-inch wide uh, root ball. No, it happens so often. It happens so I and you know, but the homeowner says, Well that you know, the pool company will say, Well, that's what they asked for and the homeowner will say, Well, that's what I asked for but you know, you needed to someone who could stand back and say, Okay, that's what you wanted and you wanted to maximize I get it that you want to maximize the space in the yard, but a professional who's gonna give you their honest opinion and say, Okay, well this is the consequence or this is the alternative, right? Yeah, and it's also okay to ask more than one person too. I right, think that, like these types of things that I see this happen a lot, where you things are, and especially if I come into a project where I'm doing just planting or something, mm-hmm. or I'm coming in just to do one specific service, mm-hmm. it's just sort of question why was this done this way? Mm-hmm. Um, there was clearly wasn't a whole lot of thought behind it. Um, is there a plan? Is there a design to this? Well, no, we we don't have a plan. We right. don't, you know. So you you might find this is very off quite often is you, you find in again the pool setting where they put in a beautiful pool on a patio and decks they have the 18 inch garden and then somehow they forgot to put an irrigation line in mm. um into that garden that is now landlocked with stone and concrete yeah. and pools yeah so you know it, it, so any investment you put into this hasn't been designed properly because the irrigation hasn't been hasn't been taken care it hasn't been accounted for right yeah, I mean, I think the benefit of looking, when you're working with professionals, we're going to look at the big picture. Yeah. And sometimes if you, you think, you know, they want to deal with the pool guy for the pool and the, and the you know, the plant person for the plants and the, you know, the contractor for the install, but they're not, nobody's overseeing all of it, right? No one's talking to, you know, looking at the big picture. Mm-hmm. Well, I've had this conversation with a couple of designers lately that, and, I, and I'm wondering, like, uh, the, the model that we have, mm-hmm. I think, in our business needs to change a bit where the designer sort of has more responsibility with the client, almost as a project manager. And um, and that way, you're you're involved more in the project, more right. with the client, mm-hmm. and you're seeing your design from start to finish, um, as opposed to the contractor trying to field all the the change orders and the, right. and the questions to the designer, yeah. the designer, the project manager, mm-hmm. it makes amazing sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. It really appeals to me too, because there's nothing worse than, uh, you know, leaving and then coming back and going, well, that's not what I drew, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's not what I was thinking, you know, cause I mean, changes do happen, right? Yeah. We, you know, we all know that, but, uh, but I think that that is a service that we can provide that help not only helps the homeowner, but helps the contractor. To me, I think about it as that cause your priority is your crew, your priorities, the material, your priorities, making mm-hmm. sure the job stays on schedule and you're dealing with weather and employees. You shouldn't have to be, you know, dealing with all the you know the little not that they're not I you know I know our listeners are homeowners and not that those calls aren't insignificant but I think sometimes you know it where's your time best spent right 
Right. I mean, I think, yeah, our, our time is best spent in, in producing on the job site mm-hmm. and making sure that we're on, on task, on point. And, and if, we, if, we, if we're working with a designer, um, then the designer, it would be amazing to have that, that, that ability to have them so they're managing the changes as they see if there's a challenge. Mm-hmm. That's what quite often happens is when you're starting to do a build is that there could be some changes, but the designer may have just you know, did the design. Sometimes we don't even know the design. The design might be the customer may have bought a design from somebody. Yeah. Um, and then they call us to do an install. So we have no knowledge of this person, mm-hmm. no idea who they are. And they're, they're done. They're gone. They're, yes. So we need to bring them in. Bring the designers in. Mm-hmm. Please, yes. I know I'm biased, so for our listeners. <laughs> I'm biased, too. Yes. Yeah, no, because I, I think in this situation, it's, it's not, you know, where everybody wins, including the homeowner, right? Yeah, and, and it's just, there's too, I have, there's too many examples of, of projects I've had in the past where designs weren't clarified. Mm-hmm. By, and it's not just the client, it's my staff. Yes. Oh, yeah, like, I was going to say that. So how does the design affect the crew? Oh, my, they, they're, it's, you're going to have a far better install if they know what the next step is mm-hmm. than, um, you know, something that's sort of piecemeal together of we have to put in a, you know, a garden, a patio, a walkway. We don't know what stone we're using. No, not yet. And it's sort of like um, build it as you go. It's right. not a very, it's not a, it's a very unsettling feeling as an owner and as a, an employee because you, you, you just don't understand what, is happening next really like right it's gonna what's changing what's like you know you need to have something you don't know what you're working off of. mm-hmm. they don't know what they're you know if you tell them it's got to be a 20 by 20 patio that's one thing yeah um but when you start adding a whole other bunch of elements to it you got to have something that's got some direction to it yeah that the people can um, uh, refer to and time wise like so it must help the jobs be just run more efficiently well that's exactly what happens is they what what I, I, I witnessed over the years is they, they start forming their own design committees on the job site <laughs> to create what they need to do that should have been done by a designer, the designer yeah. <laughs> through the client or whatever. And, um, and so they start designing it themselves and trying to troubleshoot it, yeah. problem solve it. And they usually generally do. Yes. But it, it costs a lot more money. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot more indeci- indecision on what to what's to get done, uh, so it, it, it can be very frustrating for them. And um, there's been we've had some heated arguments over the years with, without designs. So, anyways, last year, I guess last year we we just stopped. We just we're not doing it anymore. There's no if we're doing anything. I don't care what it is. It's mm-hmm. got to have a design to okay. it. Okay. So when a client calls you, so let's go back and talk about, so the first contact, so right now I'm sure your phone is ringing like crazy. Yeah. So they, so how do, how do our listeners like just have a, just prepare them for how, walk them through the process and what the process should be like? Well, when they, when they call in, they're going to, we're, we're going to ask a whole bunch of questions about um, what you're looking to do, the scope of what you want to do, where you live and um we want to, we then right away we look at Google Maps to see the position of the house, see mm-hmm. where it's sitting on the street, get an idea of what's going on in the neighborhood. Right. Um, and it helps a lot to get just get a, sort of a sense of the neighborhood of what what's going to work, what's not going to work before I even get out there. Yeah, access even right. Well, I can see some access. Yeah. You know, usually from yeah overhead on Google Maps, you can sometimes see it, but generally you got to measure that. Mm-hmm. And then um, when I go. Cool. For the first visit, uh, just get an idea of what they want to do, and we're telling them. I, I just mentioned that we're part of our services. We provide a design to it, and I um, explained to them the benefits of it. And quite often, people say, "Oh, I don't need a design." Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I just, I, I just stress the importance of it. Yeah. And if they don't want to get a design, I just, I, I really don't know. If there's much more conversation. Oh, I see. Wow. Um, so it's come to that for you. That's great. Well, well I, I, I think it. It, it just um, it has to because we we just there's there's just not enough time in the season to get stuff done mm-hmm. yep. as it is and um, we want to do things properly we want to do it the first time we don't want to do it repeatedly we don't want to do things twice yeah um, we want to be on budget and when we don't have the tools like a like a budget or in, in a design it's just very hard to to accomplish our goals 
and and uh, we weren't accomplishing our goals. So I changed it up, and now we're on track, and things are going far better with plans and designs, and in, in engaging the designers. Well, that's great, and um, it helps everybody. Mm-hmm. And, it, and and if you're going to spend ten thousand dollars on a project, mm-hmm. or five thousand dollars, or twenty, or a hundred, if you're spending five thousand bucks on a project to spend five hundred dollars on a design as part of that project, yeah, it, to me is just it's just it, such a simple decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think about it too because sometimes people. You mean this year might be just the five thousand dollar project in the large scheme of things in the backyard, right? But really, the whole backyard can be designed, and and then you know you can work on that plan over a couple of years because not everybody has that hundred thousand dollar budget, right? No, and I think that's and that's one of the things that I've, I've, I've over my entire career, probably to my detriment in some cases, mm-hmm. that I've always said to people, you can stage your projects. So mm-hmm. if you have the design, yeah, you can pick away at the project and in two, three, four seasons, whatever you want to do, or two, three, four years. Yeah. Uh, or longer, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So you could do the back this year, you could do the patio that next year, you could do, like, you can sort of phase it and stage it. But at least you've got something to go by. Yeah, I think that's another, you know, thing that people don't realize the benefit of. So you're, you're just working with a designer once, but uh, it's really creating a whole plan in, in your, your front and backyards, right? Yeah, and then once you have a plan, so for example, if you have a backyard plan and you decide this year you, you have a budget for a new patio or it's new stairs or a landing or whatever it might be, um, you build your structures and then you might decide that the garden that was designed is now too small, too big, mm-hmm. want to add a few things so you can actually have a revision on it yeah. as to what's been there and now you've lived with it for a while. And you can improve upon the design that's already been implemented. So I think, that, again, it's a very uh, symbiotic relationship to have with your designer. Yes, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, and I think I think it's great, your point about uh, the effect of the crew, and especially with changes too, because I think if a client makes a change, then to see the, the change... You know, because it's like a game of telephone, right? They mm-hmm. say something to one of your crew guys. Your crew guys, you know, say something to you, and then you know, and then the change is made. But is was that really what the client meant? <laughs> you know, as opposed to having someone oversee it, like a designer that would say, "Okay, this is what it's the new look. This is what we're going for, or this is what we're you know where we're moving it, or this is the new size of the patio." No, exactly, yeah. and 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 that's what happens when when I don't have a designer Mm -hmm. and I measure out a patio and I price it out as someone wants a 20 by 20 patio, you price it out and they really don't know what 20 by 20 looks like Mm -hmm. in their backyard until you dig it out because they haven't had a plan. And now this thing looks too small, might look too big, might not be what they wanted, you know, because they really don't understand what they're, they, they they need it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not suggesting anybody's stupid, but I yeah. mean, when I'm when I'm doing um, any renovations, we we do designs for that. I mean, why would I, if I'm getting my bathroom done, why I need to have a design? I I don't understand all the ins and outs of of the plumbing, mm-hmm. so I want to have a professional design it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, are all designs created equal? You know, there's be some people that like, well, why would I pay for a design when so and so will just, you know, give me something and and just give me a free quote with a with a little design attached? Well, I guess there's a client. For, there's a client. There's a designer and a client relationship everywhere. Yes, you could. I mean, people's budget uh, might work for some designers as opposed to others. Um, you can do. I was actually thinking about. I was, talking to a designer a while ago, a couple of years ago, and it was a very one-sided relationship, which I was impressed by because she owned the design. If she presented the design, you got to see the design, but you didn't get to keep the design. It was still her design, uh-huh. even though you paid to have it done. She, it, was her, it was her baby. Really? And if you wanted to keep it, it was like an extra $5,000. It was, it was just over the top. Wow, and it was very high end clients, and mm-hmm. it was uh, it was in southwestern Ontario too, which I was, was impressed. It was amazing. The stuff was beautiful, but you know people will pay it, mm-hmm. and it's you know 
depends on the, the clientele and stuff. But I think that if you're if you're trying to compare designs, like if you have a, a sketch, at least it's a start. It's yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Um, and based on budget, it's a it's a start. And I, I think that it's it's better than nothing. It certainly is. A, it's it can help. Right. Um, but when you get into you know, if you're if you're even simple walkways and, and, and patios and um, front entrances, front gardens, it, it's nice to have um, like a Dynascape design mm-hmm. or a, a SketchUp design or anything CAD based that just gives you some dimension. Yeah, and um, it allows collaboration with the staff. They can think about how they're going to attack it, how they're going to build it, what they're going to do. They know what the dimensions are of the of the property. They have an idea where they can put materials. This is all beforehand. So, mm-hmm. you know, yes, you have Google Maps to look at, but you yeah. also now you have a design yes. you where you can stage stuff, stage your products, where you can put the trees for the project, whatever you have to do. Mm-hmm. So, again, it's... <laughs> Saving time, yeah. It's important. Mm-hmm. For sure. Now, um I just went, thought had a thought and then went right out of my head, but that's okay. Um, yeah, that's so, well, the thing, the other thing I would think about as far as the design goes, it must help you prepare an accurate quote. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's got to be a huge savings. You know, if we're, if uh, again, that comes back to the collaboration, right? So with the homeowner, yeah. the contractor, because I, I don't, as a designer, and I know all designers will say that, we don't want to design something that can't be built. <laughs> Right. So we, right. you know, that collaboration between designer and contractor is huge and yeah. with a uh, homeowner. So when we when we design an area or, you know, it's a retaining wall or something like pillars, even, you know, we want to make sure that we're choosing the right materials. Yeah. And that's where your expertise is invaluable. Um, yeah, and we and I lean on people for that, too. So mm-hmm. I work with a lot with Permacon and um, they they provide us with engineers as required to build retaining walls and things like that so it's nice to have that and they will work with designers and they work with the homeowners as well so it's nice to have that ability to, to actually build things properly using the available resources that we have yeah there's a lot of tools that uh, the homeowners don't realize that we do have access to right with these companies they do provide quite a bit of support don't they and what one of the things too that i've been doing lately is when, when i do provide pricing to people i put in the budget for a design, um, and then I, I will price the job as I sort of, as our conversation happened on the site. Okay. But it's a budget. It's not the final pricing until the design is completed, but it gives them a ballpark budget to work with. I, I, I'm trying to now provide like a, a low range and a high range of the budget so people can see that, you know, it's going to be 3000 bucks to $4,500. Mm-hmm. Based on you know your final choices and stuff, whether it's larger plants and more expensive brick, um, a couple different options or whatever. So that seems to help too, sort of clarify things to people that like now they're getting because there's always a sort of a, um, a a lag with the the design process where you 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 go see the client, you look at the job, you call the designer, the designer comes and looks at the job. You haven't priced it at this point yet. So right. the designer then goes home and builds the design. Mm-hmm. Still haven't priced it yet because you haven't seen the design. So yeah. <laughs> anywhere from a day to a month. Yeah. Well, maybe a couple of weeks. I don't yeah, know about a month. On who you're talking to, <laughs> yeah. But, okay. <laughs> um, it could take anywhere. Yes, from a day to a couple of weeks. Yeah. And and then when you get the design back, then you have some revisions, and you still haven't priced the job. Right. So now it's like I'm taking a few steps out of it and giving them a budget they can sort of see and work with. Hmm. And it, it's, it's, I think it's a very good process because it just, you know, you've, now you've got your designs included, you've got a budget of the project, and this is before the client sees a designer. And I think that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it seems, people seem to really enjoy that. Yeah. And I think having that rough budget helps the designer as well, right? Because if there's yeah. no budget for retaining walls or garden walls or seat walls, then I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to put them in the design, right? If it's a, well, you yeah, know, exactly. if, the, if the client's looking for something a little bit more and they want the seat walls and you've, you've mentioned that and you've included that in your budget, then, you know, then I know I can include them. Or if I haven't included it. Mm you see that option, yeah. then that's a revision on my part where I just have to, you know, okay, we're based on Joanne's design. 
uh, we were at five thousand dollars roughly budgeted, and now she's got a two thousand bucks worth of stuff. Um, change the budget up, tighten up the um, the descriptions, and you've got you're already working on the project. Right. You're already working through things with them, which is nice. It's mm-hmm. very again collaborative. Yeah. You're putting, you know, more. I think you're putting more power in 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 the customer's hands, and you're also putting a lot of taking a lot of pressure off the designer because you're not going in totally cold. Mm-hmm. You're going in with some sort of understanding that the client is looking to do something seriously. They they, they want the design. They want to work with you. They're excited to, to actually work with you, which is nice. Yeah, and the material. So, because when it comes to material, there's really you know good, better, best sometimes, right? Um, well, I think we're lucky in Ontario. We've got some really good stone manufacturers, like manufactured stone, like interlocks and retaining walls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think they're all pretty good. Like they're the ones that we're using. The the big ones are, I think, are all very similar quality. Um, and I think what what I like is that the customer has a lot of choice. Yes. There was a lot of years <laughs> when there was it was pretty slim pickings on what you had to choose from. Yes, for sure. And, you know, maybe it's gone a little bit overboard, but if you look at the building industry, like, there's a, a, a billion different types of tile you can pick for your house. Yes, that's true, too. And I think that there's um, a good complement of, of products from each manufacturer that can give anybody, with any budget, a really nice project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes you do need to, uh, I know I presented a design today and they're like, well, where should we go to look at stone? And I said, I said, hold on. I said, let's, you know, I had some revisions on the design. I said, let's together work, let's look at the <coughs> books and kind of narrow down the look you're going for. Mm-hmm. And then I'll send you to go look once you're, you're looking between, you know, two or three different stones, because to send you blind into this, you know, there's so much choice. I, I think you'd be upset at uh, up, upset at me, right? That uh, you want to really narrow it down a little bit. So, uh, so they both agreed. They're like, oh yeah, it can be so overwhelming. Well, um, it is, and I've I've seen it when I go to the stone yard mm-hmm. and I meet clients. So I I go the odd time we'll meet at a um, the client site and just go through the catalogs, which for some people is fine. Yes, get the idea of of the colors and stuff like that and they're fine with that other people want to see the stone they want to see the you know where it comes from and if you send them there without any direction it i've looked at these poor people and they just look lost and disappointed yeah. and frustrated and everything all the stone at the stone yard looks dusty and yes, stuff and, you yeah. know it's 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 not you need to have some help with that. Yeah, definitely. And that is another place where the designer can help, right? Because we can yeah. we can take the time out of our day to take them to the to the stone yard and look at stone or bring the stone to their house. Yeah. You know, a lot of people want to see it against their brick. Absolutely. You take know, and that's something, home. you know, a designer can really help with and help and they're helping I by that I mean the, both helping the homeowner and the contractor because you know, right. for you to leave the site of one job to go and bring stone for the next job, you know, it's not necessarily the best use of your time. I mean, sometimes it's on your way and you know, whatever, yeah. um, you have to, you know, go by there to double check a measurement or something like that. But uh, not if you have a design, of course. But uh, yeah. yeah, so, so that's another reason I think to have a design. And it's the same. And it's the same thing with uh, not only the stone yard, but the nurseries. Like mm-hmm. I find it sometimes if I'm, you know, if I again, if I don't have a design and I'm doing some small job that I probably shouldn't have taken on because <laughs> I didn't think to get a design done. Yes. And I'm I've put in a garden and I got to fill this garden now with stuff and I have no idea what I'm going to put in there until I get to to the nursery. Yeah. Then I spend way too long looking for stuff that I, that may or may not work in the project. Yes. Yeah. And it's just not, it's not a, it's not a benefit to anybody. Mm -hmm. And it, and if you send clients to the nursery, you know, be prepared for an extreme, without supervision, without yeah. an information of what they need to be looking yes. at, they'll come back with stuff that won't work. Yes, for sure. And even though the, the staff at the nurseries are well-meaning, they don't know the space, right? No, they don't know no, the, the, the light conditions. Yeah. You know, I've done that. I've, I've had a client go for a boxwood hedge, and they went for boxwood, and the and then said something about wanting green and white. And so the, the person at the nursery sold them um, six euonymus. Yeah, well, we have to remember that we're... The nurseries are there to sell plants. For sure. The stone are there to sell stone. That's and right. That's right. Sometimes, uh, <laughs> the, the, yes, the, whatever. 
Yeah. No, no. I mean, well-meaning. Like, they were well-meaning. The homeowner said green and white. and But it's like, well, but you wanted a hedge. Like, you asked for a boxwood hedge and, and this yeah. euonymus. You know, yeah, I guess you can, you know, force it into a hedge. But really, in the long run, it's not going to be what you wanted. But, you know, it's too late now because here it is. <laughs> and, yeah. the, and we're putting it in now, you know. So, yeah. So, sometimes having, you know, I, I say that to my clients. I said, yeah, you can walk around the nursery with the plant list and, and try to figure out where everything is. Or you could just call me and I can just, you know. Have it uh, have it delivered and, and well, the nursery can thing. be a, a lovely place to visit to walk around. Absolutely, and plants and if you if you you know so inclined, but it can mm-hmm. also be extremely stressful when you can't find what you're looking for and you don't know to understand what you're supposed to be picking out or yes. whatever. Yeah, and that can be the same for like if you look at the, some of the natural stone products too, right? We mm-hmm. do a lot of flagstone and and that's again a very personal. Yeah. Case that people need to see the stone. A mm-hmm. lot of the cases, they need to see what it looks like weathered, what, what it's going to look like with different colored grouts, um, and they need to sort of visualize what it's going to be. So that's where you say, like, yeah, we we drop off stone samples so you can sort of get an idea of what it's going to look like against your house. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and if you walk into a like one of the bigger stone yards, they. Like it's it's so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. There's so many choices. Same with decorative rocks. It's hilarious to go. Yep. My my friends think it's hilarious that I go and like try to pick out decorative rocks out of this big pile of rocks. But you know it when you see. Like I, you know, as a designer, I know it when I see it, and you know it when you see it. You know, yep. you know the which one's going to work. And uh, but to send a client to this pile of what seems to them one big pile of a whole bunch of rocks, you know. But we oh, can yeah. we can yeah. see, yeah. yeah. And I think you yeah. and I've had that discussion. Remember, I want I can remember a job where I wanted the rock on its side, yeah, 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 because the, the grain was going a different way. And so you and I had discussion about that, and you didn't want to do that. that. <laughs> do you remember that? I do. <laughs> I do. Um, and I've seen, I, and I see that happen now and then, and I go, oh my god, please. <laughs> Yeah, and mine at my I have one at my house and it's on its side. But I really yeah. like it that way. Well now the yeah, so I was going for that same look. But I, I talk it's your house. It's exactly, your exactly. But I could appreciate that. Uh, so uh, so that's what you get, a homeowner, right? When they are when the designer and the contractor are, are working uh, collaboratively. Um, right. so when you're getting back to the quotes, often what happens, so we talked about the price of a design and the investment in the design as far as the time and the and the money, but um, And then you quote, and the homeowners often, usually most of the time, right? They're shocked. Um. Well, I try to try to alleviate that shock. I try to when we walk around the project. Okay. And they want to do a a garden. They want to do a flagstone porch. They want to do this, this, and this. They want to do a patio, and 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 at the same time, I'm sort of gathering up numbers in my head, saying, "Well, it sounds like." You know, you're looking at a project of between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. Oh, okay. So that's how you try to alleviate the sticker shock. Yeah. Okay. And they say, "Oh, uh, yeah, that's about right." Or they say, "Oh, no, 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 no. We we want to be around five to 10 I'm like, "Okay." Well, then we have to change our strategy. Right. But at least it gives you a little bit of um, understanding of where they want to be, and sort of what, what, what they're thinking in terms of value. And sometimes it's a question of, of talking to them about, explaining to them about what constitutes value for your project mm-hmm. or for your property, too. Yes. That, you know, if your house is in the new economy worth uh, $1.5 million and it was worth 400000 last year, <laughs> I don't know if you want to spend 10% of the value of the house on your landscaping. That right. would be a lot of money. Yes. Um, so you want to sort of tailor your budget to work with the house as opposed to the value. And, um, you just, you you have to, you have to budget the right, the the allotted money and make sure that you're, you're getting value for your money, of course. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, we want to make sure that we're putting in the right, the right landscape. Right. Okay. So that's good. So that helps if you you can kind of give them. So it's not, you know, sometimes people have a number in their head, clients, but they might not want to share that. So if you're kind of being proactive and throwing out those numbers, you can kind of, and in relation to specifics, right? Well, you yeah. know, patty about that size so that they get a better idea of what they're getting for that price, right? Right. And I think, yeah, and people have to be honest with themselves too. Like, you know, they need, if, if they, 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 I think people inherently know what they want to spend mm. 
but you're doing yourself and you're doing the contractor and you're doing the designer a huge favor by letting them know we're not going to, if you tell us your budget is $5,000, we're not going to make it $4,999. <laughs> and like, it's not, we're not there to gouge you to make exactly take all your money from you. Right, right. We, we want to know what it is that we're working with and what elements we can provide or go above and beyond what we can provide based on the budget you've got. So, you know, it, and I and I and I find that people um, will. I think people that have researched a lot to kind of know what they want to do and they ha- sort of understand, it, or maybe they've done a landscape on a previous house. Um, but it does help. It really does help everybody to know that there's a, there's a, there doesn't need to be a secrecy to it. Like right. Your budget's not a. Yeah. Your, it's not your bank balance. Yes. It's not your bank yes. Account. Yeah. yeah. No, that's I a good point. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and unfortunately, if you're spending about $5,000 on a landscape and it's your last $5,000, there might be other issues to look at. Yeah, so, yeah. You um, know, I want to make sure that we're giving you what you want and what is value, but you, it helps. It really does help when people, um, we can help. We can just design, we can design the project to your budget as opposed to, we don't. If, we, if I'm guessing, I'm yeah. saying, oh, I don't know how much they want to spend. They, yeah. they didn't have a budget. They didn't. They don't know what their budget mm-hmm. is. So when I sort of say, okay, it's going to be whatever, three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, at least it, I can sort of see the the reaction mm-hmm. and what their next the next thing out of their <laughs> mouth is is either awesome or oh dear. Yeah. And sometimes I I worry that sometimes when people don't know the price and don't you know when you say for them to do their research, I think they think the best research is to call five or six different contractors and get five or six different quotes. Yeah. And and that's where again without a design, you know, I try to explain to people, well now you're you're quote you know, they're quoting what's in their head as far as the layout and it's not necessarily what you were looking for. You know, everybody's quoting something slightly different. So now you can't compare apples to apples. Right. Um, do you find that? Like, how do you handle when people say, oh, I've already called a couple others or? It's probably uh, just don't go. Yeah. I just, I, if you if you can't get what you need in four or five contractors. Yeah. Um, I've seen this many, many times where I get called and they've had four or five quotes. If you can't get it. In that number of contractors, there's nothing I have to offer that mm-hmm. you haven't already seen from these guys. Yeah, yeah, and it's not even worth it to call that many. You know, I think if you've called contacted two, don't you think? I think one or two. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, if you're calling reputable companies mm-hmm. and, and and there's no real issues with anything, then yeah. you know, you, and you're comfortable with the the, the contractor. That's that's the main thing. Yeah. You got to be comfortable with the person. Yes. Yep. That that's you're, important too. That you're working with. Mm-hmm. If you're not comfortable with the guy or girl, then then find someone else yeah. for sure. Yeah. But if you have a good relationship and you're and like oh, I'm pretty open and transparent with my stuff, so I'm not um, I'm not that hard to get along with. <laughs> and if you if there's a problem, then yeah, find someone else yeah. for sure. And if that doesn't work, then find another person. Mm-hmm. But I don't think if you if you're, unless your time is not valuable, yeah, uh, I don't know that more than two two or three people is it's a lot of effort. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of effort for the for the contractors, it's a lot of effort for the clients, more mm-hmm. for the clients than anything else. If you're meeting five people, that's, yeah. that could be potentially five to ten hours of yeah. of meeting with people and possible second meetings um, for a, a residential landscape I don't think is necessary. Mm-hmm. I really don't. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And so that's that's good um, to know. Um, uh, so after like going back to the process a little bit. So after the quotes approved. So, you know, you've yep. kind of we've done the design. We've nailed down the material list. You've, you've pro- you know, provided a quote. What uh, can homeowners expect after that, like the timeline and, and what they can expect during installation? I thought maybe <coughs> you could speak to that well, a little bit. Um, yeah. If, so if you're booking projects right now, you're probably going to be getting an install date of into the well, for us, it's into June and July. Right. Yes. Um, and in that meantime, there's going to be back and forth on products to choose, and there might be some new stuff come out. 
um, that we're going to recommend and make some changes up until probably the day of starting. And the, the day your project starts, I'm meeting with uh, my foreman um, on site, or we probably actually, before that, I back that up, we're, probably at, we at, we're at the yard at, in our office looking at the plans, uh, going through all our information on yeah. and everything, making sure we have the locates that have been called, mm-hmm. called in so we know we're clear to dig. Um, we want to make sure neighbors have been notified uh, and hopefully the homeowner one. has mm-hmm. talked to their neighbors. That's a very big issue that we have where neighbors don't know what's going on and are shocked some mornings um, that something's going on. They weren't alerted to it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, yeah, sorry about that, but uh, we're here to work. Yeah. And uh, someone may have should have notified you. Yeah, but, for sure. <laughs> um, and then we start work and um, we are try to be as clean as possible. Um, that's a huge thing we've try to eliminate doing any loading on the roads now so I'm not we're not dumping um, we're not dumping material on the road as much as we used to so we're keeping things in the trucks so that um, there's just less mess at the end of the day mm, that's good and that's a huge thing for for well for me too it keeps my cost down for cleaning yes. and it also um, keeps the materials on the truck keeps it from getting all over the roads and everything else. So it was just less clean up. Yeah. And it go, a rainstorm comes and, you know, yeah. They're go- <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so it's a, so yeah. So we're trying to keep that. That's another thing too. I, I, I've, I have a hobby in the summer when I'm doing projects of driving in the neighborhoods and looking at all the landscapers working and taking pictures of the disasters they leave on the roads, <laughs> piles and piles of bricks, piles yeah. of dirt, bins, whatever. And, um, you know, you want to hire professional people that don't do that kind of stuff. Yes, definitely. So what you get from from us, anyways, and from most of the quality people, is clean job site. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of working from anywhere from seven a.m. to five or six p.m. Um, job sites are left clean. Um, there's client interaction during the project, making sure that everything's happy the way that everything they like is happening. They like to see it happening. It's happening the way they want it to happen. Right. Yeah. Now, do you want your client, your homeowners, home, or do you find you wait for them to come home after work? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I, I, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, some people work from home. A lot of people work from home, and yeah. and they find it to be disturbing and it's loud. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, you might want to go work in the home office that day or the uh, the regular office yeah. that day. But for the most part, people get up, go about their business, go to work. If there's a challenge, I'll call them. Um, usually, something very similar or very small, sorry, just to yeah. go through and make a change on or something. But um, um, we work um, five or six days a week in the summer, and you should have no problems, really. Yeah, no, good. Um, sometimes I've heard this, too, where let's say you, you know, people ask you after the quoting stage, they'll say, you know, how long do you think it'll take? And, you know, yeah, let's say, you know, you say, okay, let's say it takes fi- it'll take five days. And then yeah. all things, and in your mind, you're, that's worst case scenario, right? Like you're all these contingencies built in there. But let's say you had great weather, yeah. either brick was in stock everything the cutting went well and yeah. you're out of there in three and a half days yeah and do 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 you find homeowners are like well like almost you know they want expect it to be cheaper or something right but i've never had that really. have you never I had that okay not good really no. yeah well that's good i i have had that um you know in other jobs i've been uh, uh, uh worked on but i think home like it doesn't you know the size of the job and that that doesn't necessarily relate right no, because there's so many, yeah, there's so many elements that go into a project. And I, I can, today was case in point. It's the first day of the season, really. And we're getting everything going. and All the machines are moving and everybody's getting where they have to go. And you encounter problems. Yeah. Right. And, and you get, you, and generally the problems re- cause us to delay jobs. Um, and when everything's going smoothly and going well, it's a it's a bonus for everybody. Yes. But what you're not seeing on that job that ended a day and a half early was there might have been an extra guy on site. Mm, true. Um, or an extra two guys in some cases. Yep. Or if it's my company, it might be me on site, which um, can help or hinder depending on who you talk to. <laughs> yeah. But um, and that's an extra body as well that's moving things along a little bit quicker. We might have an extra truck that day. Okay. We have so many factors that help us get things done quicker right? or can delay us at the same time. If I don't have that extra guy, if I don't have that truck, if I don't have whatever that day, um, you know, 
then it could take an extra longer, yeah. take a day longer mm-hmm. from five days to six days. Yeah. So it's, and you know, we're working with nature. I'm working with, I'm working outside. I'm working with traffic. I'm, I'm basically bringing a factory to your house. Yes. Yeah. I'm and last year the heat, load, right? Up. What's that? The heat last year. I mean, the guys can work hard, but last year was tough, right? Yeah. It was a, it was a hard year last year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we're bringing, like we're bringing um, like a, Full, fully functional factory to your house to do work and, and setting up and taking it down at the end of every day. Yeah. So there's factors that can more equipment helps us sometimes and sometimes yeah. more equipment slows us down. So yes. Yeah. It depends on the project. It really does. But um, yeah, I haven't had too many people. I think when people start a project, they're happy to have you gone. Yeah. <laughs> you start, as happy as they are to have you there. For sure. So we have a, a listener who emailed in here. Carmen emailed that uh, she checked out your website, Chris, and she said it's awesome. Oh, I think so. So she really Carmen. likes the work. So uh, so that's great. Um, yeah, and t- boy, time flies. Look at the clock. <laughs> almost time is the right thing. Yeah, it's almost almost five two. I just want to wrap up quickly just to talk about after the job is complete, yeah. the homeowners should expect some kind of a war- warranty, right? There yeah, are, yeah there, we offer right now, we offer five years on all its own work. Okay. Um, which should cover anything. Yeah. Um, that, that's, uh, we're pretty confident with what we installed that we don't have these problems. So Excellent. Excellent. And uh, so why don't you give a shout out at where our, cl- where our listeners could find you in the, in the you area? You can find us at um, hvlandscaping.com. Okay. You can find us at 416-473-0000. And you can find me on Instagram at I think it's my HVL. Yes, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and yeah. you do. I mean, that's where we, you know, trade work, look at different things together. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Instagram's become a really good uh, tool, I think, for communicating situations to to clients and prospective clients, and um, it just gives you the ability to, yeah, for sure to mm-hmm. put before, after, during pictures, and it's quite nice. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you, and I think uh, I think it's helped so that people understand. You know, all not all landscapers aren't the same, and that uh, really looking for someone who can provide that that whole package, I think, is really important. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, so I think uh, highlighting the landscape design build uh, is a feature is a, is a really good thing. So I, I'm really glad that you came on the show and we could talk about it and just explain the process, you know, cause I enjoyed it. It was fun. Good. Not everybody understands the process. So right. I think uh, we live it, but uh, not everybody yep. else does. And it's a huge investment and we understand that. So uh, I think it's great to take the time and uh, really walk them through it. So uh, thank you very much for joining yeah, me thanks, tonight. Joanne. You're welcome. You're welcome. Catch and I hope you. we talk thanks. soon. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Bye-bye. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you learned a little bit more about the landscape process. Gary, what do you think? Did you learn a bit? I, I You know, after that person wrote in about the, the website, yes. I actually went online and looked. It's amazing. Yeah, the he work does they've a, done, yeah, he does it's phenomenal. Yeah, he does a really good, good site. Well, and you know, it comes down to what you both said. You need a plan, and you mm-hmm. should use a professional all the time instead yep. of trying to do stuff on your own. Yeah. For sure. And I think, uh, I mean, setting our expectations a little higher when it comes to landscapers and uh, really trusting that we bring um, expertise to the to the backyard, to their situations. And just because they like, again, that pool example, you know, I understand that, you know, you want the pool three feet uh, from the from the fence. But, you know, professionals should be telling you that that's not the best uh, situation, you know, and this is why. So, uh, so, yeah, so uh, that was another great episode. I think it's uh, definitely a timely one. We're all about uh, the landscape design season has started. Like Chris mentioned, any calls or any new uh, uh, leads this, like this April, you're really looking at, you know, uh, pretty much end of June, probably more like July time frame. Um, because most of the early jobs were booked last fall. Right. So I tend to try and, and remind everybody of that. So please have patience with all of us. And uh, we never know what the weather's going to do. So uh, so I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight on Down the Garden Path. I'm really looking forward to next week. Uh, we're going to talk to Alex, um, who's starting a, a whole new nursery. Um, so I'm really looking forward to his story. The nursery's called Beach West Nursery. Where's that going to be? In it, The nursery's in Schaumburg. And so it's been up and running, but it's still in its you know young stage. And uh, so, Alex, I really want him to share his story and his journey of uh, going out on his own and, and creating this. So, uh, so Very yeah, I'm cool. really looking forward to next week's episode. And I want to thank Chris Ray again with Humber Valley Ner- uh, Landscaping for uh, a good talk and, 
and uh, lots of uh, exp- uh, uh, experience from his part and uh, advice for our listeners. So, and if uh, someone wants to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Absolutely. Um, my email, of course, is joanne at down to earth, the number two, earth.ca. My website w- is down to earth.ca as well. And uh, please uh, feel free. You can see all my at the bottom of my website, all my social media links there. So whether you want to follow me on Facebook or Instagram, please do. Any questions about plants, gardening, landscaping, advice, uh, I'm happy to help. So please uh, send me an email. And I know our listeners are from all over. So I'm sure if you're not in our area, in my area or Chris's area, please, uh, you know, contact a local landscape contractor, landscape design build company. And be patient. And, yeah, and know, be patient and uh, and know that they bring a real value to uh, your your yard and your project. You're going to live with that uh, for many years many so you years, are done yeah. right. And a lot of people, I, I've had a lot of people so far this year say because of the housing prices, no one's buying a cottage and no one can afford to move because where are you going to move to? There's no, you're so right. really the investment needs to be in your house and it needs to be done well and curb appeal is important for resale backyard functionality is huge for resale so you don't want to be making mistakes those are really costly mistakes so uh so yeah so thank you once again everybody and uh for listening and tuning in to down the garden path here on reality radio 101 thank you for listening to down the garden path with your host joanne shaw right here on reality radio 101